What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Rise Up Rich podcast. I'm your host, David Haas. Got a very special guest in the studio with me today, and I'm super excited because I think this is a really important podcast for everyone to hear today. And I, I got introduced to Jay Lynn, that's sitting across from me, um, through my wife, who's a tattoo artist, and she gets tattooed here by a tattoo artist here. And somehow I got turned on to her Instagram, and she has like uh, some very unique uh, points about the current pandemic and the whole state of overall health. She has a background in nursing and she kind of made the decision to, to go a different way after completing nursing school. Um, so Jalen, I'm not even going to say your last name. I was going to do it and then I'm screwed up. So what's your last name? Constantino. Constantino. Yeah. I was, I, I knew I was going to screw it up. So, um, thanks a lot for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm really excited because, um, you know, we were talking before the podcast and like, this is such a, it's weird that it's a, such a sensitive topic, coronavirus. And um, just as we were leading up into getting ready to start, we were talking about how when people have two different opinions, um, they immediately shut the other person off or they get so tied to their position that they won't allow themselves to hear any new information. So if whichever side of the coronavirus you're on, meaning you're you're all about the lockdown, you think that's this is what we should be doing, or if you're on the other side, you think that um, you know health comes from within and we need to look at our overall health and you don't think the lockdown is doing anything good or mask are doing anything good for people's health. Whatever your stance is, I just kind of encourage you as you listen to this podcast to be open-minded because we don't want to shut the door. You know, um, Spiritual growth is about being open-minded and being open to all opinions so that we can get to the truth. And today we're going to we're going to kind of try and do that. And we're going to talk about uh, the pandemic. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and we're going to try and get to the truth. So why don't you give me a little bit about your background? You were in nursing. And after like just kind of seeing some things and coming to some realizations, you decided to make like a, you kind of just withdrew from nursing and you're kind of heading on a different path. So why don't you just give me that story you gave me before we started? Yeah. So I did my four years of undergraduate studies in nursing. And I loved everything about it. I went into it because I really wanted to help people. I wanted to help people heal. The problem that I had was it was so pharmaceutically driven. And that was kind of the main paradigm that we were operating on. It was, okay, this person has a symptom. Here's a pill for that symptom. It wasn't really, let's get to the root cause of the symptoms so this person doesn't need this medication for the rest of their life. And that really just struck a nerve in me. I just thought that it was didn't really make sense. And we weren't really treating the body in a holistic lens and I think that as much as health can be physically debilitating there's also a mental state to it a spiritual state to it there's a lot that we need to like, that encompasses somebody's health and well-being and I just didn't think that within nursing I was able to really do what I wanted to do which was help heal people and I was having problems with doctors on the unit with med students and I was just trying to have discussions on how we could help better somebody's health and their health plan and their care plan and it was just I was always being told to just do my job and just stop asking questions and to stop digging further and I was confused because I was like isn't the goal here to like heal the patient and in my last year of nursing my favorite unit was the oncology floor and that is where I saw the most disconnect with what is like what helps with health and promotes health and then what is just feeding and disease and it came down to what was on everybody's meal like meal trays and the food that we were serving the sickest and most critically ill patients in the hospital was so void of nutrition and nutrients and it just didn't make any sense to me why we feed people on chemo such garbage food and no one had like i was asking the clinical manager I was asking the nurses and I was like, oh, I don't know. And like, yeah. I'm like, so why? <laughs> so like, nobody knows, but like nobody cares to like dig into it further it's just because it's not their job or it's not under their scope. And I would ask doctors about it. Like, why aren't we like upping their nutri nu nutrients? They're like vitamin D levels and zinc levels and all this other stuff. And they're just like, oh, that's a nutritionist job. But the nutritionists, even then, like they don't have control over what the government subsidizes like for food and like what like that's that's part of the government right it's not like mm -hmm. a individual nutritionist on the unit has control to change and order organic foods and foods that don't have pesticides on them and stuff like that to help fuel this person's body so that they stand a fighting chance to be able to heal their body yeah and i think 
I think what you're digging into is, and what you're you're tuned into, and I, I want to get into how you you started to have that opinion because I think one of the things that happens when we do go to school and we get a degree, or especially you know doctors, when we get a, a doctors go and get a medical degree, and nurses, and the same for nursing, is that essentially if we're not careful we then begin begin to view that degree as another program that we've just bought into mm -hmm. and when we've bought into a program then what we end up doing is closing the door to any other potentialities that exist for healing right if i if i went to someone and said oh you know like i help people heal by doing spiritual healing treatments and you know if you're completely closed off to that because of the program that you bought into that the only way to heal people is by giving them a pill or mm -hmm. chopping out the, the the cancer you know um you're just going to completely, you know, shut that down and you close the door to like what is actually what is what the actual potential is. So how did you how did you get there? Like what what was the like what made you start looking like deeper at overall health? Like why weren't you just like every other nurse that said, oh, I'm going to be a nurse and I'm going to push pills or whatever it means and not to downplay what nurses do. But I'm just saying you no other nurses aren't where you're at they didn't take this step away and say what is really going on here right so what is the difference between you and let's say just uh, someone that just kept on going i think one of the things that if you want to say woke me up to the issues i have with our pharmaceutical industry i got the flu shot a couple years ago in my first year of nursing because we were told if you don't get it you can't go on through the program because you won't be allowed into your placement and so they don't really give you a choice there. And so I went to get, get the flu shot. So I went to the Banwell Shoppers, and I'll never forget this day in my life. And I had the every textbook adverse reaction to a vaccine except for death for the flu shot. I went in, and I don't like needles to begin with. I mean, who does? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, talk to the doctor. I was like, listen, I don't do well with needles. I get really dizzy. Can I please sit down? But she was this very sweet, short lady. And I was like, you know what? It's probably easier for me to stand up for you. So I stood up. The second she put the needle in my arm, it was burning. And, like, and I was like, please take that out. Like, something's wrong. And she didn't. And I, like, blacked out. I sat down. I started getting so cold. I was shaking, but I was sweating at the same time. And then I was like, listen, I don't feel good. And she's like, well, you can't wait here. Go wait like where the blood pressure cuff machine is, where those chairs are out. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so I went and walked over there and I'm sitting there and I was like the tripod position. My breathing was getting deeper. I was having like respiratory depression. I was breathing like, <gasps> and I was not okay. And I was like, okay, if I can just stand up and walk to my car, <laughs> I'll be okay. And I stood up and I walked and I just fainted right on the floor. Oh, no. This sweet elderly woman woke me up and she's like, we need some help over here. And the doctor comes back over and she's like, oh, you're still here? And I was like, lady, I told you I was not feeling good and you did not even check on me. And I was like, I need to go to the bathroom because I felt like I was going to throw up. I felt so sick. And she tried to like help me up. And I was so, the way I could describe my vision was like static TV. Like it was just like in and out. The room felt like it was spinning. And I was so nervous. And I was like, oh my God. Like I honestly felt like I was about to die. Right. Probably needed an EpiPen. And she walked me into the back room. Now the bathroom in Shoppers is in the back of their stock room. It's all cement walls. There's, it's just cement walls. And she just left me in there. No one checked on me. Nobody checked on me. And I proceeded to like throw up so much. I was shaking. I was like in the fetal position on the floor. I was bawling my eyes. I was so scared. I thought I was going to die. And then all of a sudden, like, um, like after like 10 ish minutes, I was able to like stand up and I was feeling a little bit better when I went to my car. Shouldn't have drove, but I drove home. I lived around the corner. And then the next day I woke up with hives all over my body and I couldn't lift my right arm like above my shoulder for a month and a half. And then, you know, and all of these symptoms of vaccines are just like, they're just not being reported. Like it's like something along those lines is just you're not hearing anything about it it's being it's being dumbed down on the internet if you try and search um anything anti-vaccine on the internet or the side effects of vaccines it, it's hard to find that information like i had to get uh, like this this five disc dvd set from a client of mine actually because she had to like get it on the dark web to, it was like you know about what is actually going on when it comes to vaccines and here's here's your experience with a vaccine i my uh, my father-in-law's um, father just got the flu vaccine. He broke out in like mouth rash all over his mouth. And it's like, these are the things that are just going unreported. I actually um, got a tetanus shot. 
um, like three, maybe two years ago. And it was, I was playing basketball and someone elbowed me and I split my eye open and they're like, Oh, you need a tetanus shot. And I'm like, do I need a tetanus shot though? You know, <laughs> like, I'm like, I wasn't playing in the dirt and you know, and you know, even with all that I know, even you got a doctor and you got a nurse standing beside you saying, yes, you need a tetanus shot. You believe them. And you're just like, okay. So I gave in and I got the tetanus shot. Similar experience that night, shaky, cold all night long, felt like I had the flu essentially. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And then the other thing that happened with the, with vaccines for me that kind of woke me up. And I'm, here's the thing. I'm not anti-vaccine, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm sure that there are some vaccines that do some good, but just from what I've observed and if I wasn't, if I wasn't open, I wouldn't see this because, um, I would be like a oh, vaccine saved the world and everyone, you know, gets their vaccines. And I wouldn't even have noticed the reaction that would have been eh, a little reaction to the shot. No big deal. I would have dismissed it but because I'm, I'm open-minded and uh, I'm like started asking questions and we had this little dog and if Bree's listening to this podcast, she's going to cry, but we had this little dog and, um, like dogs, the vaccines for animals are insane. Like they're, it is just insane what they're doing to dogs and cats. Like the amount of vaccines they're pumping into these animals. And so we had this little dog. She had all these health issues. Probably some of them were vaccine driven. Um, anyways, she, it was in really poor health. We ended up seeing like a healer who told us that it was toxoplasmosis that she had. We treated her for toxoplasmosis. She was making this huge recovery. We were like coming right around like she was feeling great. And then we were going to travel. We were going to Spain for a month and we wanted to bring our dog to Spain. But part of the rules to bring your dog on a plane and into the country is that you have to have all your vaccines up to date. And we haven't given her any vaccines since she was in poor health. But because she was making this recovery, we're like, OK, let's vaccinate her. So we give her the vaccines. She died like a week later. Right. And we knew it was from the vaccines. Like, yes, there were underlying health issues for her. Mm -hmm. But like, what do you think? Like, you know all of us are doing right now we all have these underlying health issues because of we're just not really we don't not really have a full understanding of what true health really is like we've lost sight of what healthy is absolutely i want to say in terms of vaccines because what i was taught in nursing was here's how the first vaccines were created here's the vaccine schedule vaccines are safe and effective that was it that was it it wasn't like here are the adjuvants here are the components here is how we culture the vaccine here's how they grow here are the potential side effects when we're told to talk about side effects to parents it's like yeah your child might get a fever and he might have a sore arm that's it so when people think like oh you got a side effect of a vaccine it's just like a sore arm like you'll get over it if they could only read the vaccine insert and look at the plethora of adverse reactions and you think adverse reactions like, OK, but those are really rare. But like Harvard did a study and they found that less than one percent of vaccine adverse reactions are even reported because there's absolutely no incentive to make a doctor who's so busy, barely has time to spend more than like five minutes in a patient's room to go and like fill out a report that his uh, patient got injured by X vaccine and they had these symptoms. But I don't understand why people people like blatantly just they go like no there's no like vaccines can't harm like they don't yeah. want to believe it that there's potential harm in it and i just think that the term anti-vaxxer is so strange to me because i don't understand what people think these mothers and these parents who lost their children who watched their children get injured have to gain by trying to warn others to just look into the safety mm -hmm. whereas if you look in the other lens what does a pharmaceutical industry have to gain by profiting off of making people sick? Because if you go to look, if you can type in like MMR vaccine insert, you'll get the FDA document. Go to the adverse. It's everything from transverse mellitus. It can cause like, it even says like on 13.1, section 13.1, it says that it's never been tested for carcinogenic potential or, mu or gene mutation despite containing components that can cause cancer that are carcinogenic and can mutate your genes and it's just like they're also not tested on women who are pregnant but we are giving flu shots to pregnant women and it's causing miscarriages there is there are so many people who are suffering from so many autoimmune diseases and it is because we are bypassing our body's natural immune system when you go to eat something or you ingest something say you're peanut you eat a peanut mm -hmm or someone breaks a peanut and you smell it, it's either going through your respiratory system or it's going through your digestive system. Your body has some defenses there to try and help and protect you. When you inject a substance into your body, you are bypassing all of this immune 
like this immune response that your body has, it goes directly into your bloodstream. And thanks to this preservative called polysorbate 80, it opens up the blood brain barrier. Now there are trace amounts of aluminum, trace amounts of mercury and some vaccines still and other adjuvants, but that goes and deposits into your brain. Now what's interesting is they're finding that people with Alzheimer's and dementia have high amounts of aluminum and heavy metals in their body. But what all this causes is one of the first symptoms you see is children. And this is like, it's so heartbreaking to me, but kids get febrile seizures. And it's because, why? Because their body is, why do you get a fever? It's because your body's trying to heat up your core temperature to kill off unwanted pathogens. It knows that something's in there that shouldn't be. And it tries to kill them off. What's the first thing that parents do? They reach for Tylenol. So that suppresses your body's first defense. And then with Tylenol, that also it also halts your bo- your liver from producing glutathione, which is one of your body's master antioxidants that can help actually really like minimize the damage of these vaccines. So it's like these kids don't even get a fighting chance. And what we see a lot of is SIDS, like sudden infant death syndrome. Tell me how in 2020, we do not know why tens of thousands of children suddenly just don't wake up. They just, they just die, just suddenly. And we just accepted that as something normal. But if you can look at the sudden infant death syndrome and you look at that baby's last wellness baby checkup, which is when they get their vaccines, they're usually within a day or two. Oh boy. And what's very interesting is during this pandemic, they've seen like, I think the stats like 34% less children died this year from sudden infant death syndrome, coincidentally, because they couldn't get their vaccines. So oh, wow. it's very interesting to me, but I think people really need to look into this and to stop penalizing and gaslighting mothers for talking about vaccine injury because i think that there's nothing that someone can gain from trying to just warn people to look into something like this is something that you are literally injecting into your body and like you need like people need to take a few seconds to look through this and when you go to administer vaccines i've had to give vaccines out i've asked like have we given the boxes and the um like the inserts to the parents so that they can read. Do we go for questions? There's nothing like that. They go, oh, it's standard procedure. They're going to get a hepatitis B vaccine <laughs> for a blood-borne transferable disease that you usually get from like sharing needles or like yeah. having unprotected sex. Like what baby <laughs> falls into that risk category? Right. Yeah, and I think that's like a big thing that's happened with vaccines is that they've just grouped them all into like, oh, like all vaccines are good and we're going to start protecting you from it. And then like even with with our with our daughter, you know, we actually went went to our doctor and we were basically told if you don't vaccinate your daughter, I'm not going to take you take you as a patient from like a local doctor. And like just that right there was like such a turnoff to me. And I was like, well, you are not our doctor, right? Anyone that is so like just narrow minded Mm -hmm. and not even willing to say, Oh, well, I understand why you would be concerned about what you're going to put into your child's arm. Like, let's, let me give you the information that I have, not just like shutting it right down. And I was just so taken aback by that. And that was, you know, I've already, and I think you, you share this similarly with me is, um, you know, I went veg in, in 2005 and I think going veg is kind of what opened up my eyes to the programs that I had been buying into, right? The program my whole entire life that you need protein to be strong and, um, you know, meat makes you healthy, milk makes your bones strong. And, you know, then once I, you know, when I kind of pulled the, the curtain and I actually kind of went like, I started doing the research on food because my business partner at the time, my mentor now, uh, Andrew Fack, uh, he, he was like hardcore vegan at the time. And uh, he was just kind of like always introducing me to all the, these stats. And I actually like started doing my own research to try and prove him wrong. Right. But then this the more and more that I that I read into it, I was just like, holy cow. And then I read um, the China diet study by Dr. Colin Campbell. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I have been doing this all wrong. And, and then I just became aware of the program that I had bought into. Right. And where did I get this program? And it was just from all these, you know, mainstream media. You get it in school like they're teaching the five basic food groups of mm-hmm. all of them are almost all of them, which are, you know, meat and dairy driven. And I was like, holy geez, this is this is crazy. So then I think that's what opened the door for me to have like just a, a, a more open mind. And I think it starts for a lot of people with food. And I think you have a similar story to that. Yeah, um, I think in terms of food and when we think about why did we learn what we learn? Why do we believe in what we believe? You need to follow the money. 
why did dairy what was dairy in the food pyramid to begin with i know they took it out um uh, recently and it's no longer even on like the my plate that we have but the reason it was in there is because there's lobbyists and because they lobby with the government and they help subsidize meat and dairy they make this more accessible like if you ever wondered why when you go to mcdonald's salad's like six dollars but you can get like a whole happy meal for like a few bucks it doesn't make any sense you know to the most people like because they think eating healthy is so hard but is it hard it's not it's just our tax dollars subsidize meat and dairy and they subsidize the factory farmed meat and dairy so a lot of people don't like to hear that because obviously like you need to support your farmers and i truly believe that food is food is like all we have um it's really important that we have clean food but the problem is like we're not taught or like have any like sense of awareness of what we are eating and what's on our food in terms of pesticides in terms of herbicides there's like trace amounts of metals there's pharmaceutical drug runoff in our water is like fluoride in the water there's so many things that just don't make sense to me why it's just standard procedure and it's just accepted and like why we push dairy why we were pushed on dairy like so much when we were like what we are finding now i guess is that the my food plate the new canada food guide that we have they said that they're going off of research now and not on the interests of corporations which is why they removed dairy Mm. because there was no health benefit to having dairy in your diet there was no essential it's not an essential food group dairy's not a food group Mm -hmm. yeah and it's just to me it's really strange when you go back to why do we believe in these programs and you would look at your teachers like these are educated professionals you look at your doctor that's an educated professional you would think that they have your best interest at heart and i don't think for a second that any doctor is trying to cause harm with anything that they do or any teacher at all but you got to think about like what are you doing because i still have to explain to doctors that as a vegan protein is found in plants like the basic components of nutrition that i would assume somebody in the field of health would understand they get they get like hours of nutrition like in their in their whole in their whole yeah. career of studying yes. it's like a few hours on nutrition and it's just like why is this not the root of what we are studying like we should be looking at food because if everybody could eat healthier if everyone knew how to eat healthier if there was more money um divided up to ensure that we had cleaner farming practices and we have like i don't even know why we have the title organic food or if you go in the grocery store you see like the natural food section what do you call the other food then so you have natural food and unnatural food like the processed garbage i was every time I grocery shop I look in people's carts and I'm just like wow like how is any of that gonna help boost your immune system like how is any of that it's not gonna help be helpful but at the same time like not to be judgmental but I know that healthier food costs more money for some people but there are ways and like ways that we could educate people on how to eat healthier and more whole like a whole foods diet to like up their nutrient intake but it's just not something that anybody talks about I 100% agree, and I, 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 both Brie and I have that same uh, shopping cart mentality. Is like, you, you can't avoid looking at what's in other people's carts, and then, and then you see them, you know, all masked up and worried about the coronavirus, and, and it's just like, oh, like you know, maybe like clear out what's in your cart, and you know, let's look at overall health. And I think that's what's happened mainly with the coronavirus is that we've looked at everything at like a microscopic level like there's this tiny little virus but it's like our bodies have trillions of viruses Mm -hmm. in them at all times right The, the human body is the most advanced healing machine on the planet and we forget about that. And I think we also have forgot about, or maybe we haven't forgot about, we never, we never really truly learned the truth about what real health is. I remember when I was like, I was trying to like get in like the most amazing shape possible. And I was like getting ripped and working out like mad and watching my diet perfectly. And I like got down to like 175 pounds. Right. And like right now I weigh like 200 pounds. Right. So I got down to 175 pounds and people were like, what are you doing? Like you look too skinny, you know? And I'm like, no, this is what I'm supposed to look like. (laughs) Right. And we forget that. Like when we see someone that's in shape, you're like, you look way too skinny because they won't have like the puffy face or the, you know, the little bit of extra 20, 30 pounds on them that we've all grown accustomed to seeing now. And when I was at my, my peak of wellness, and this is when I was, I was exercising twice a day. I was like eating as clean as you possibly can, like no sugar, no processed foods without even trying to really like lose weight. The weight was just melting off of me. And I was going back to the way I was supposed to look my entire life. And then everyone was like, raising the the flag of concern because i didn't look like everyone else anymore and i think that 
the big thing is that people just don't even understand what healthy is anymore because we've been so programmed to believe that, you know, uh, low fat, uh, milk is, is good for you. Right. And it's just, that's just an example, but like, we just don't really know. But what I wanted to, what I want to suggest is that it's not impossible to find out. Mm-mm. Now, with very minimal research, and even with the coronavirus too, even very minimal research, and uh, you know, some internet searches, read a few books, and it's like your eyes are going to be opened. And I guess you know, like what I would want to suggest is just for people to, when it comes to their health, to just stop being so lazy, right? It's like. I know I want to live as long as possible. Like my goal is to live to like 120, you know? So I want to, I want to be here as long as I can so I can help as many people as I possibly can. And I take this life as a gift. So I'm not going to take it for granted and just, just put into my mouth, put into my body through vaccines. What someone has told me, I want to know the truth before I do anything. Absolutely. There's a fantastic book called How Not to Die by Dr. Michael McGregor. Mm. If you haven't seen it, I highly suggest checking it out. I think the last 200 pages are just like cited journals of like medicine that he has studied. He has a whole team that just all they do is every single year is they analyze all of the health studies that have come out and they decipher and they go, they go like level steep to find out like the test results that they have. They go through their original studies that the, that the study used to make sure that everything, you know, like nothing was like was like taken out of context or anything like that so that they can present the most up-to-date truth on knowledge and he has this fantastic book i think the chapters are like how not to die from breast cancer and they go in but it goes into nutrients and how fueling your body like our bodies are so incredible like our bodies can heal themselves from anything and i think the the thing i found the most fascinating was the placebo effect learning that you could tell somebody you could have two groups a controlled study and then the other study and like half of these participants are like, hey, I'm going to give you this pill. It's going to lower your blood pressure. The other and it's a sugar pill. And the other the other group gets the actual like medication that does lower your blood pressure. And then after a few months, usually the placebo group has, if not better results, just the same results. Like people just believing in it, right. it happened in their own body. Mm-hmm. And like that's that's insane. That's super fascinating to think of um, on its own. But in terms of nutrition, I don't understand where the disconnect is that doctors still dismiss what you eat as like being helpful because I go to doctors and I'd be like oh yeah like you know I have this symptom and I'm trying to find the root cause of it and I just don't understand the point of that right. and I've I've had to like fire <laughs> a few of my doctors we don't pay for doctors here but I just go like listen I'm never coming here again because they wouldn't even make eye contact they just get their prescription pad out and just start jotting down the second they hear a symptom they're like oh I know the drug for that right. and I'm just like it's not really like for me And I would just be like, well, listen, I've been trying to incorporate more of this food because it has this enzyme and this phytonutrient. I've read studies on this and this and how, you know, it can help um, regulate your hormone production. I think that's like the baseline because I was trying to get, um, I was prescribed birth control when I was 13 years old because I was anemic, not sexually active, not eating birth control, but they put me on it for anemia. Instead of telling me to eat more iron or give me an iron supplement or more dark leafy greens or like organ meats or stuff like that, it was just like... Here, take this pill. And then it was after five years of being on it, I started like looking into the research of long-term side effects of being on birth control for women in that period that I was on. It's so detrimental. Skyrockets your risk for breast cancer. Skyrockets your risk for ovarian cancer and all these other issues. And I was like, why am I on this? And I was like, oh my gosh, I stopped taking it. And then I lost my period for two years. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what's happening here? And I was like, you know what? Like I just basically poisoned my body and shut off a natural function that it is it is inherently made to do. So I'm like, what am I going to do here? Because it was getting synthetic hormones. I'm like, hey, my hormones are messed up. I need to fix my hormones. Well, where are your hormones created? Mostly in your gut. So I was like, I need to look at my food, my food intake. What's in my food? And I started doing so much research on that. I found so many holistic doctors and It was interesting to me because these are like doctors that are free on Instagram. Like I don't have to pay for this knowledge. They're just so happy to like help give people information that they could be empowered to heal themselves. And these are the first doctors that get told they're quacks or something because they they want to vouch for like the natural healing method over the pharmaceutical drug. And people just forget that like like Western medicine is not the there's a place for it. There's definitely a place for medication. But it's not the like, it's not the goal of like, I don't know, like the way I would judge a doctor is like, how many patients did you get off of medication? Like how many patients did you help like get to the root cause of their problems and you like solved them and you cured them and they don't longer need to see you for that. That like you should, that should be how we celebrate doctors. 
I can't think of a single person I know who has gone to a Western med- medicine practicing doctor and has found answers. Yeah. I and I'm just like, and like, you know, let me give you an example. Uh, um, I know somebody that recently had like, uh, was having uh, all kinds of digestive problems and um, they came to the realization that there was an issue with the gallbladder. So the solution was to take the gallbladder out. Right. And it's just like, I, I mean, if you're, I know if you're drawn to listen to this podcast and you're listening, it's because you're, you're ready to kind of have your eyes open. And it's like, if your body, your gallbladder, for example, is flaring up and creating gallbladder attacks, that's essentially your body screaming at you saying, whatever you're fucking doing is not working. Mm -hmm. So this warning light, this warning light in your car, you put the analogy to your car, you're driving your car down the road and all of a sudden the temperature light comes on. It's like, well, what do you do? Do you put a piece of tape over the temperature light or do you pull over to the side of the road and say, what the heck is going on here? You look under the hood and get to the root of what's actually going on. But what we're doing in our modern medical times is like, oh, uh, your gallbladder is going, let's just take the gallbladder out. Well, now, now you no longer have your warning system for when things are actually going wrong in the body. And the same thing's happening with cancer, you know, is the body is reacting to some sort of toxemia in the body. Something is off and it, we call this a tumor, but essentially what a tumor I believe, and you maybe can tell me better because you, you you obviously know way more than I do, but essentially uh, the way I see it is the tumor is trying to contain that toxemia in the body and it creates this mass and all of a sudden we call that cancer. Then we go in there and we start poking and prodding and cutting it out. Well, then that toxemia is spreading throughout the entire body and you know eventually you'll end up succumbing to this thing, right? So I think it's just like, this. it's about looking at, everything from every level and not just saying what are the symptoms and let's treat the symptom it's like we should not be treating the symptom of anything anymore we should be going why is this happening in the first place you know if a doctor asked me i remember i was getting like the cyst on my back forever and i I was in spain and this thing like uh flared up on me and i went to the doctor and and she gave she gave me the stuff for it and she said well the real question is why are you getting cysts and i was like Hmm, that is a good question, right? And the, like just by her saying that kind of like tuned me in, I'm like, what is going on? Why am I getting cysts, right? And then uh, right away for me, it was like, because of the knowledge that I have with food, it's like, it's food, it's food related, right? And it's like, um, you know, I just made a few tweaks to my diet and it's been it's been good ever since, right? So I'm getting to the root of it, but that's what doctors should should be doing. And this is what we should be, not even doctors, this is what we should all be doing for our own health is like, if you're having a symptom, it's like because something is off, and that symptom is just a warning signal saying, "Hey, we got to look deeper, deeper within to try and get to the root of it." And th- I wanted to say something about like the, you said the word quacks, right? And you know, over the course of the history of the world, anybody that went against like the herd mentality was you know called like a quack. Like if you look back, you know, a um, hundred years ago, slavery slavery was legal, you know. Um, 50 years ago, doctors were telling patients that they can, they should smoke cigarettes to improve their health, you know, and if you went against what these people were saying, um, you were labeled a quack or you're crazy or you're insane. And this is about that mentality of that positionality. And there's a, my mentor, Andrew has this thing. He always uses that. There's only two conversations happening in converse in coffee shops. This is my opinion, and yes, I agree with you, right? And it's because as soon as someone disagrees with us, we immediately shut them down, label them a quack. So what I wanted to do right now is play a clip um, from a medical doctor who kind of like had the courage to speak out. And he's speaking, I don't know who exactly he's speaking to in this clip. I think it's like politicians or I don't know, but you can research it on your own. We'll link the, the, the clip in the description. But he starts off by saying, before you think I'm a quack, because what I'm going to say is like a little bit, uh, you know, against the whatever the whole world is saying. He's like, here are my credentials. So he spends about like the first minute of this thing just listing his credentials. So let's listen to this clip. And then after we're going to get deeper into like what's really going on with, with the coronavirus. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Dr. Hopkinson. I just want to let you know I'm standing by. Oh, okay. Well. We would love to hear from you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I do appreciate the opportunity to address you on this very important matter. Um, and what I'm going to say is lay language and blunt. Um, it's counter-narrative, 
And so, so you don't immediately think I'm a quack. I'm going to briefly outline my credentials so that you can understand where I'm coming from in terms of knowledge base in all of this. I'm a medical specialist in pathology, which includes virology. I trained at Cambridge University in the UK. I'm the ex-president of the pathology section of the Medical Association. I was previously an assistant professor in the Faculty of Medicine doing a lot of teaching. I was the chairman of the Royal College of Physicians of Canada Examination Committee in Pathology in Ottawa. But more to the point, I'm currently the chairman of a biotechnology company in North Carolina selling a COVID-19 test. And I might, you might say I know a little bit about all of this. The bottom line is simply this. There is utterly unfounded public hysteria driven by the media and politicians. It's outrageous. This is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on an unsuspecting public. There is absolutely nothing that can be done to contain this virus other than protecting older, more vulnerable people. It should be thought of nothing more than a bad flu season. This is not Ebola. It's not SARS. It's politics playing medicine, and that's a very dangerous game. There is no action of any kind needed other than what happened last year when we got uh, felt unwell. We stayed home, we took chicken noodle soup, we didn't visit Granny, and we decided when we would return to work. We didn't have anyone need anyone to tell us. Masks are utterly useless. There is no evidence base for their effectiveness whatsoever. Paper masks and fabric masks are simply virtue signaling. They're not even worn effectively most of the time. It's, it's utterly ridiculous seeing these unfortunate, uneducated people, I'm not saying that in a perjurative sense, seeing these people walking around like lemmings, obeying without any knowledge base to put the mask on their face. Social distancing is also useless because, because COVID is spread by aerosols, which travel 30 meters or so before landing. And closures have had such terrible unintended consequences. They should, you, everywhere should be open tomorrow, as was stated in the Great Barrington Declaration that I circulated prior to this meeting. And a word on testing. I do want to emphasize that I'm in the business of, te of testing for COVID. I do want to emphasize that positive test results do not, underlined in neon, mean a clinical infection. It's simply driving public hysteria and all testing should stop unless you're presenting to hospital with some respiratory problem. All that should be done is to protect the vulnerable and to give them all in the nursing homes that are under your control, give them all three to 5,000 international units of vitamin D every day, which, is, which has been shown to radically reduce the likelihood of infection. And I would remind you all that using the province's own statistics, the risk of death under 65 in this province is one in 300,000. One in 300,000. You've got to get a grip on this. The scale of the response that you're undertaking with no evidence for it is utterly ridiculous given the consequences of acting in a way that you're proposing. All kinds of suicides, business closures, funerals, weddings, etc., etc. It's simply outrageous. It's just another bad flu. And you've got to get your minds around that. Let people make their own decisions. You should be totally out of the business of medicine. You're being led by, down the garden path by the chief medical officer of health of this province. I'm absolutely outraged that this has reached this level. It should all stop tomorrow. Thank you very much. Okay. So obviously, uh, Dr. Uh, Hodkins there is like pretty fired up about the whole situation. But though, this is a guy, the head of pathology, you know, and virology and all these things. And yeah, and I'm sure that people are going to pick it apart and say it's not just the flu and all these things. But um, there's a few things that I just want to I want to talk about from this. And I think that you with your background and this knowledge base will be able to like really talk to them. One is he says he starts it off. He says talking in lay language and he also says these uneducated people and this is what we're seeing play out 
every single day. It's like if you, and you're seeing it personally because you're you're being pretty aggressive on your on your social media feeds about um, what's really going on and and you're feeling the attacks kind of that are coming back to you, mm-hmm. right? So when he says uneducated, he's not trying to put people down. He's just saying you 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 know you don't have the background in medicine that i do right and understand exactly how viruses work and how the body defends them and um the the infection and how it all works that's essentially what he's saying so he's like all these people are doing is just going out and regurgitating the information that they're hearing from the media and they're he he says in there he's like you're being led around like lemmings right Mm so why don't you just using your 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 schooling and what you know because like you, you know so much right i'm glad that in the beginning of this podcast you went through everything that you did because i was just like wow she really knows her shit right so what is your take on what's happening with the coronavirus so in no way do i am i saying that the coronavirus doesn't exist coronaviruses have been around SARS is a coronavirus the common cold virus is also in the family of coronaviruses the problem i have is the way this is being handled in the media and with the testing, like the doctor says, the media, I have no idea why for 20, like 24 seven, nonstop fear mongering, like terrifying news, terrifying statistics, half of them not even true. Like it's just all it does. If, if I didn't know anything about health and I had no idea, you know, like no interest in health and healing and I had no, no medical background, that is terrifying to watch and witness like basically saying you hug grandma you're gonna kill her don't like don't leave your house stay inside like wear a mask don't talk to people like don't it's just it's so isolating and to me it's gotten to the point where people have forgotten how to be healthy and i feel like i feel like when we are looking at a virus and yeah, that's terrifying. It sounds like, like you know, like a virus, it, it's contagious. It can kill people. Of course, like that's terrifying. But is it actually killing us? Is it actually as lethal as they said? In the beginning, if you remember last year, around this time last year, we were watching videos of people in China dropping dead in the streets. And they were like, people are dropping dead everywhere. It's a coronavirus. It's a pandemic. It's heading to you soon. And I was like, it's very strange to me how we didn't see any videos of that anywhere else around the world once coronavirus hit the world. And I was just kind of like, that's really interesting. And it was just like a lot of like fear and like just like so much like just fear mongering. I don't know what else to call it. It's just like fear mongering. And what happens when your body is fearful, when you're scared, your body goes into a fight or flight response. So you're pumping more cortisol through your body. That like that help (laughs) that stops your body's ability to like look at something rationally to critically think to like decide and remove yourself from your emotions like and see do I really believe in what I just heard do I look can I, can I look into this further why is this person telling me this like why do I believe this like no one's able to do that you're just there's so much fear and because everyone else is fearful around you it's just like you almost get comfort in like the people around you and like their sentiments around it because it's a shared sentiment. It's like, oh, well, everyone thinks this way. So like, it's okay. Like this is the norm now. It's the, the new normal mm-hmm. as they call it. And when, when it first happened, I was looking at this and being a conspiracy theorist, you could call me, which I just want to put like a side note that the term conspiracy theorist is, I think it's so silly because do you not believe that people with a immense amount of power and money conspire (laughs) like if you don't think that people with power money can be corrupted like if you don't believe that there's like well let me interject on that one because i think that's where you know you might end up losing people when you think of like a conspiracy theory Mm -hmm. but i i don't believe so much that these people are conspiring to do harm Mm -hmm. i think they're conspiring to do good what Mm -hmm. they think is in the highest good so for example Bill Gates, what he thinks is in the highest good to help people heal is vaccines, mm-hmm. right? So that's what he thinks is in the highest good. So the, the thing about a guy like Bill Gates is that he has power, he has money, he has people in high places. So if he thinks what is going to help people is get vaccinated, guess what? The world's probably going to end up getting vaccinated, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know if there's a underlying like, Mm, we're going to make more money from this thing. It could be, but um, I think that everyone is is doing what they think is in the highest good, and sometimes that sometimes that is being led by misinformation, mm-hmm. uh, misbeliefs, and it could end up doing a ton of harm. 
Mm -hmm. I don't mean like, I don't mean that like people who are in charge with the coronavirus are consp like they're conspiring. Right. I just mean like the term conspiracy theorist, like when someone labels someone who questions the narrative as a conspiracy yes. theorist, I'm like, well, you know, to think of an ulterior motive for someone else in a position of power money, like I don't think it's so far off, you know what I mean? Of like all logical ideas mm -hmm. that somebody could be corrupted because we've seen it with tobacco science, we've seen it with everything. Like people, politicians can be bought, doctors can be paid for. Um, but with the coronavirus, forcing the country to shut down and to close small businesses and all of this stuff, it's just had such repercussions that the death toll of the repercussions alone are exceeding the coronavirus deaths. We are having more suicides than we've ever seen before. More prescription meds are being written for anxiety and depression. Japan alone in October had more suicides than they did during the entire pandemic. And it's just heartbreaking. And we have, I think people like to realize something just because you are okay being in your house. It's so fortunate for some, like I'm so fortunate that I am in a good household. I have really healthy, kind people around me. But there are people who are stuck with an abusive partner. There are children stuck in abusive households. And when we removed school from children, teachers are usually the people who, who are able to catch signs of child abuse and signs of child neglect. And in Texas alone, there was like a 264 increase in kids texting in that they need help because they're being abused by the, their own parents. And right. it was just like, we got to like look at the repercussions. Like, okay, we have a virus that attacks our respiratory system okay but if we could look at the death toll we had last year for the flu it was like 1.5 million and i think 3 million died from tuberculosis those are staggering numbers those are very intense numbers coronavirus is nowhere near that yeah and it's just yeah. like why did we not have masks last year for the flu mm -hmm. it's it's contagious it's a respiratory virus that you can like that can be transmittable like asymptomatically as well and the people who succumb to the coronavirus, usually they have underlying health conditions. I think the CDC even released a statement saying that 94% of their listed COVID deaths had an underlying comorbidity, such as diabetes or heart disease, which we know heart disease is the leading premature killer. One in three people in North America will die from heart disease. And how that's not a pandemic is beyond all logic for me. And so knowing that we are so chronically ill, and I would say like most of the people, the majority of the people I know are so chronically ill, and then you have them slap a mask on their face and bathe in san like hand sanitizer, isolate themselves from their loved ones, staying indoors, closing the gyms, people are getting so unhealthy. And I've just seen, I've seen an increase in people's alcohol dependence and drug use and things like this and bad coping mechanisms because people are so stressed out they're so sad they're so depressed like some people haven't seen their families for months i know of someone who has not left their house since march because they're so terrified of the world i've seen i've had to travel on a plane this year and there was a lady in a hazmat suit she was looked like she was ready to do an operation on somebody like she no air was touching her but i was like wow like people are literally living in such fear like this mm -hmm. but what fear does to your body is it puts you in that fight or flight response it surges up cortisol in your body and it is so it wreaks havoc on your immune system so being in a state of fear makes you more susceptible to illness and disease yes. and then as we enter these winter months i don't understand how no no government agency has has taken like an hour block of this non-stop fear-mongering news broadcast to be like Listen, it's very important for everybody to get some exercise. It's really important to up your vitamin D levels, your zinc levels, vitamin C and vitamin A during the winter months because this is when we usually see people get sick regardless. Mm -hmm. Usually everyone always has like a cold or they've got the flu going around. And it's just like, if you look at the death toll now for the flu, it's almost been eradicated. There's like no listed flu deaths. So like that's amazing, yeah. you know, but maybe it's because it's also being counted as something else. But it's just like the, the coronavirus, it's not deadly it's just not deadly there's a 99.5 percent survival rate under the age of 65 that is that is like in in the face of people being chronically ill so like these aren't yes. any like just in healthy people these are like in your general public you have a 99.5 percent chance of surviving this illness so why are we shutting down businesses why are we shutting down the gyms and forcing people into poverty making just making life so much harder more stressful and just so depressing to live in and then I just there's just such a like a logical disconnect that I don't think that makes sense 
and for the government to just throw so many millions of dollars towards the pharmaceutical industry to develop a vaccine whose efficacy rate isn't even going to match the survival rate of the virus, it's, it's just so disingenuous. And it really, to me, it's like, how do you care about health? Like, how do you, you let one in three people die of heart disease and you don't address that. Fast food restaurants stay open during the pandemic, but the gyms close. LCBO is open, but the gyms have to close. I went to the mall this weekend. The amount of people who stood in line for Bath and Body Works candles <laughs> was so disgusting to me. Because mm. I'm just like, first of all, those are full of chemicals that disrupt your hormones. So they're not healthy to begin with. And they pollute your indoor air. And I don't know if you know this, but indoor air quality can be like 20 to 60 times more polluted than the outside air. So the fact that everyone's been staying inside their house is on top of it. Mm. And now that's colder, less people are leaving their house for exercise or anything else. It's just like... It's just like, how is that promoting health? Like, how do we have the gyms closing, small businesses being fined, owners like being threatened with jail for, for trying to stay open and make their livelihoods, but we let all of the big corporations stay open and none of these things are like promoting health. Like LCBO is open. I don't know how that promotes health, but like the gym can't be open. You can socially distance and wear a mask and bathe in hand sanitizer at Costco. I think you could do that at the gym. I think you do that at your small businesses. Like we have lost like over half of like small businesses in Canada. So many like millions of people are being pushed into poverty. And like, I think it's 176 million people are supposed to be projected to be in a poverty level of making less than $3.20 a day. Yeah. And it's just like, how is this? How are we saying like, we're doing this all for health? Please do your part. And like, it's just like the media is constantly like, I don't know if you are ever in the store, but it's like, it's like, please wear a mask. We count on you to do your part. And it just reminds me of like the Hunger Games or some type of like just really scary. Like, I'm like, oh, my God, the new normal. Like, what is that? And they're all like, we're not going back to like what the way life used to be. This is the new normal. And I'm just like, this is insanity. Like, how are we talking about what we need to do? Like wearing a mask for health. Like, I'm not even going to get into masks because I don't think they are effective. And you can find studies like to the end of the earth of people who are for masks and people who are against masks and because there's doctors either way, like studies can be manipulated to find like whichever result but like common sense when the when the death rate of a virus is so minimal compared to our lifestyle and like our baseline health and lifestyle how that is not the thing that we are addressing is is beyond all logic to me yeah and like i I can speak to a bunch of points there um the one being um I, don't, I think the whole world has got this wrong when it comes to promoting what is needed in order to um, protect ourselves against this. Like, is covering your face and restricting your breathing good for your health? Is staying indoors and not being exposed to nature and other people good for your health? Is uh, going into poverty and not exercising at gyms good? Like, none of these things are good for your health. And this is what is being promoted. And in talking just about the the poverty and the, and the detriment that this thing has had. I mean, I'm, I'm a small business owner, right? And luckily I have my coaching, my coaching business that provides me with a good income. But at my restaurant, like we did, uh, on, we, we, cause now we're at only 10 people and mm-hmm. we made the decision that having 10 people is, is not, you know, good. So we decided to, to transition to delivery. Right. And like on a normal night to give you numbers, like on a Monday night, we might do like, let's say $2,000 in sales, right on back in the day on a good Saturday night treehouse, you know, Saturday night, we would do like $12,000 mm-hmm. in sales on Monday of last week. We did $8 in sales and on Saturday we did $111 in sales. Right. So like this is how detrimental this thing. I employ 35 people. Right. I have four full time employees. Right. You know, it's just like the amount of money that I'm not collecting for HST, the amount of money I'm not collecting in um, uh, federal income tax and CPP and EI, the amount of um, products that I'm not buying from local suppliers. You know, it's, it's, it's astronomical. And I'm one tiny, tiny little business in a tiny little city. Right. So it is just unbelievable. And I, I coach like really like well-to-do business owners right and these are people that have like invested their life savings into their businesses and they're stressed to the max right and half of what i'm doing is helping them pull out of the pull out of the stress and get their minds right to being like hey you're going to get through this and we're i'm going to we're going to be able to separate from everything that's going on out there so you can deal with it and learn how to deal with any situation but the thing is though these are good people that have their you know that have their heads on straight and they're still having the stress. Now imagine, you know, your 
you're already dealing with mental health issues and you're, you don't have a business or a support system. It's like, Oh my God, it's like, this thing is going to create so much more harm than it is good. And then that's the exact same thing that the virus, the, the vaccine is going to do. Right. So basically what they're going to do with the vaccine is, you know, and you said it is a 99.5% of people that it, it affects, right. Um, critically. Right. And is that right now? Yeah, you have a survival rate of 99.5%. Right. So, 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 under 65. Right. Under 65, the survival rate is 99.5%. So, ultimately, what they're saying is we're going to vaccinate the entire healthy population mm-hmm. to protect the 0.05 or the 0.5% of the people uh, that are going to end up dying from this coronavirus. And it's just like, it's just so backwards. It's like, why don't we protect the people um, that are at their most vulnerable? And the people that are already healthy, let's just try and find ways to improve their immunity instead of injecting with a vaccine. The thing is, there's a there's a guy that um, is the head of a vaccination clinic, and he basically has has said that vaccine vaccines have side effects. Right. And the coronavirus could essentially have a one in 10,000 rate of some sort of really serious side effect for people. So now we're going to take. The 99 percent of the population that's healthy, and we're gonna, and their chances of dying are one in 300,000, mm-hmm. just like doc, Dr. Hodgkin say there, one in 300,000. But you give them a vaccine, and the side effects is going to be one in 10,000. It's just like, it's just so backwards. But let me be, let me be the devil's advocate here because I know what people are going to say, mm-hmm. right? I know people are going to listen to this podcast, and they're going to say, "Yeah, but I've seen it. I'm a nurse. I've seen this firsthand. Mm-hmm. You do not want this illness. Mm-hmm. This thing is deadly." Like, I've seen people suffer. So what do you say to that? So to that, I would say, like, in, in no way do I want to discredit any doctor or nurse because I've, I've seen the floors. I've been on the floors. It's really tough. And I don't think that nurses get the credit that they deserve. And I will say that I don't understand how we are, like, what, eight months into this pandemic and the nurses in the hospital are still don't have proper PPE. They don't have proper protection. They are still wearing the same medical mask for the entirety of their 12 hour shift. When I was in first year of nursing, our intern nursing class, we were instructed like and like told like it was a law that you should not have a mask on your face for more than two hours due to the amount of bacteria that it will have just because of your your breath is moist (laughs) moisture is a breeding ground for bacteria it's just like you have bacteria in your mouth and it's just like after a while you're inhaling your own air and it just creates just like if we just took a petri dish and we swapped people's masks oh my gosh the horror we would find (laughs) but these nurses are having to wear the exact same mask for the entirety of their shift from room to room i don't know how that's sanitary i don't know how it's safe for even the nurses and it's like when people say, okay, well, we're, we're wearing the mask and we're doing this to help our hospitals. I understand that. That does make sense to me. You would think, yeah, if we could stop the spread of a virus, it would help the hospitals to be able to handle the virus. That doesn't, that makes sense to me. But then if you look at it from a different perspective of the chronically ill population, don't you think if we had healthier, a healthier population, people wouldn't be hospitalized for a virus Mm -hmm. with a 99.5% survival rate? And then people go like, oh, well, some people are immunocompromised. And I'm like, yeah, I understand that. What's also interesting is vaccines cause autoimmunity issues. So it's like if you are vaccinating to pretend to protect the immunocompromised, you are essentially maybe making yourself part of that immunocompromised group. It's just, it's not a perfect system and it's like blanket medicine. It's not a one size fit all. Yes. And what's very interesting and like a side note to that is all medication that we usually give out is dose per weight. So the amount of Tylenol you would get, it's obviously different than like what a five-year-old would get, but vaccines are all one size fit all. And yeah. it's the same for like when you were talking about for like your dogs, like it would be the same vaccine you would give like a 200 pound dog that you would give like a little five pound chihuahua, yeah. the same exact amount of this neurotoxin. It's not the same. Like you, I just that always struck me a little weird when I was just doing like medication, um, giving out medication. I was like, why are we not dosing these vaccines like per weight? Because the way like a five-year-old child can handle a flu shot versus a 300 pound man, it's not the same. It's more concentrated in their body, more concentrated in their system. And it's just like the, the side effects alone to these vaccines are like not to be taken lightly. And I really think that the big problem is that is that people still including doctors deny that vaccine injury is even real they deny that there's even any side effects people deny that you can even be allergic to vaccines i know nurses 
who like nurses who have been nurses for like a decade who are like oh you can't be allergic to a vaccine I'm like you could be allergic to any component in any amount and if they go like oh there's just like a trace amount of mercury or aluminum in here and I'm like you could break a peanut in a room and somebody could go into anaphylactic shock just yeah. from the scent of a peanut like you need such a small amount for people's bodies but the other thing is um, people have genetic mutations because all of us have a different um, genome people have d- different genetics and what's really interesting is some people can't process toxins the same way like that i could some people have this gene mutation called mthr um if you ever look into it and they just like their body cannot excrete certain things like other able bodies could just of the way that it is made up and it's like we are about to mandate something for every canadian despite their health background despite if they've had previous reactions and it's just like the second that we are mandating, we take away our like medical freedom. Like you need to have body autonomy. That is like one of the things we were taught in nursing is that you need to respect somebody's desire and will and like their freedom over what happens to their, their body. Like it should not be you have to take this. It should be like you have a choice to take this. And I don't under it's also it's also weird to me because it's like if the vaccines work and you believe in your mask, like because I think they're saying now that if you don't get the vaccine, you're forced to continue to wear a mask wherever you go. But it's like, if you have your vaccine, are you not protected? Yeah, like, do the, the vaccines, do they I not give understood. you protection? But then they'll be like, well, it's for the immunocompromised. But it's like, why do I have to compromise my immune system for a virus that is proven to not be as deadly as they've made it seem? And I think, I think the main problem is the way they projected this coronavirus to take over the world in January was like it was going to wipe out half of us. Mm-hmm. Like they were acting like that. And I can understand, sure, it was new. We didn't know the whole toll, what was going to happen. But it's been months now. And with every day, the survival rate is getting better and better. Mm-hmm. And, and this, is, this is what hap- has happened in the history of the world mm-hmm. is that that uh, most diseases were on their way out already and then the vaccine came in Mm -hmm. and then took credit for all the the saving everyone and that's exactly what you're gonna see with the coronavirus is like you're already seeing the survival rate in the beginning like you said it was like this thing was supposed to kill 50 million people Mm -hmm. right and it's like yeah okay well then we got to lock down we're gonna kill 50 million people but now it's like we're we're eight months in and I think the overall worldly death rate is like 1.5 million or something I don't know don't quote me on this but it's not 50 million essentially right and now it's the survival rate is, is on the rise we have a better handle of exactly what's going on who we need to protect what we need to do to protect ourselves and now we're going to say the vaccine's going to come in and it's like oh the vaccine cured cured this illness right and you know it's it's just a i guess for me it's like i just want to i want to know the full truth and i'm not going to take anything what anyone says at face value right i want to do my own research and i want to get to the root of what's really really going on so let, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the positionality and kind of like what you've experienced with you know some of the posts that you've you've made because this is this is the and i think the one thing that has happened with this is people have become more awake with regards to what they're buying into and you know love or hate Donald Trump, the one thing that he did for us is he made it abundantly clear that the media is completely fucked, Mm -hmm. right? It is completely one-sided, either left or right. And that questioning, I think, is a good thing. Like, we're no longer just saying CNN is the most trusted name in news, right? So now we're like, oh, we just clued in. And it's almost like everyone went vegetarian for a second, you know? And they're (laughs) like, oh, wait a second. I don't need meat to... to, The only place that protein comes from is not from chicken breast, right? It's like, oh, okay. So that's essentially what I think Trump did was um, he just kind of woke everybody up to the reality of what they've been buying into. And you're starting to see a little bit more of this narrative of just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I hate you, right? And... I know that you're still not fully seeing that because like I, I think you're still receiving a lot of like hate messages and and um, two things about that one is why don't you just talk a little bit about the hate that you've received secondly how you've been dealing with it and uh, what makes you like the person that is open to like putting yourself out there like that like I'm really interested in that um all right yeah my dms on instagram always are popping with some very (laughs) kind hateful messages from people who know me and from people who have no idea and saw one post and assumed they know my entire like character and questioning my integrity and they just come and attack me and at first i would i would try to like you know like 
explain myself and I would try to make people see things from my point of view and I would be like I'm not an idiot totally like you know like you could be the judge of this but I feel like this is where I got my information from but then I got to a point where I realized like a lot of people just don't have the ability to be open-minded to look at something from a different perspective I actually went to school with somebody who is now about to be a pharmacist and I don't think she like was on my social media, but she she just started inboxing me one day. And this was like years ago about the way I was posting about vaccine injury. And then I was just like, listen, like we're never going to agree. Like you're becoming a licensed drug dealer. I'm kind of against your whole entire, <laughs> yeah. you know, like whole entire career. Right. So I was just like, we're not going to agree. And then like this summer, <laughs> I got a message just being like, your social media is infuriating. And I was like okay (laughs) i was like so you're upset at me for talking about things that are upsetting that are happening but you're not upset that they're happening like i'm just like hey this is really messed up that the government's concealing this or that this pharmaceutical industry got sued for like millions of dollars for doing this and it's not talked about and no one knows about it and i just want to bring people's awareness to that so that they're able to step back sometimes and be like what are they gaining from this like what could be the motive behind this and it's usually always like financial motives like the way we have mandates on things is because certain people were bribed with certain money you call it lobbying it's legal Mm -hmm. and it's just like there's if you follow the money for anything you usually can find like the source of the truth like who are the donors certain politicians those people end up voting in ways to favor those industries and the pharmaceutical is like a billion trillion dollar industry like there's so much money there so they have power like they have a lot of power and I could just never understand why somebody gets so angry when they would see a post of me just talking about something that's happening. Not something I made up, not even Mm. my opinion about it, just me posting about it. And to that, it's just like, it's textbook, like 101 cognitive dissonance. So that is when you are presented with information that's conflicting with what you believe in. People are unable to remove their emotions aside and to look at something and think logically like, okay, like what... What validity does this, what validity does this have? Or like, why do I believe in what I believe? Like, how are they coming from this? Like, is there another lens? Are there multiple perspectives? And the other thing is, in no way does someone having a different opinion mean that you guys are at war with each other or it has to be a debate or I'm trying to prove you wrong and I'm the one who's right. All my posts are just, I'm constantly being like, please don't take what I'm saying as the truth. Please don't believe a single word I say. Here's information. Please do your own research and think for yourself. And that's constantly what I'm always saying. Like, please, I just want to share information that can help empower people. And as much as I do get a lot of backlash and a lot of hate from people in various fields, I've also gotten a lot of people commending me and thanking me for posting what I do and sharing what I do share which is also kind of strange to me. So like, thank you for sharing this so much. Like one day I want to be like as brave as you. And I was, I was just like thinking to myself one day and I was just like, it's kind of insane to me that people are scared to have an opinion anymore. And they're scared to voice that opinion. And like nobody can like politely disagree anymore or have a conversation. And it's like, you're either with us or you're against us. Mm-hmm. And it's just like this herd mentality of just, it's all, honestly like a lot of it, is founded on like programs that were bullshit. Like we've been indoctrinated to believe so many things. Like that dairy was good for you. I remember first going vegan. The amount of my friends that I was trying to wake up, like look at like this, this increases your acne, increases weight gain, increases cancer growth because it has IgA, like uh, the growth factor, one of the main growth factors that causes cancer. I'm like, it's carcinogenic. And you know, like processed meats are as carcinogenic as cigarettes. And like, just like facts like this about health and people are just like, oh no, I'm just like, just get like totally turned off if they hear something that they don't really agree with. But also at the same time, like hardly anybody who disagrees with me even wants to look into anything I have to say. Yes. So it's like, they'll be like, well, show your sources, give me your studies. And it's like, at what point do I have to like try and prove myself to you? I'm like, well, you can go and look for it yourself. Like um, a lot of people along with like vaccine injury, I'd be like, honestly, if you took some time to try and research into like, like, you know, like look into like the opponent, if you want to say like your opponent or someone else's viewpoint, if you tried to research from their perspective, I'm sure that you would realize that like, it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray area. And I think it's really important that people realize that they're allowed to have an opinion. And it's okay if that opinion doesn't really resonate with the mainstream narrative. Yeah. Like we we don't need to hate everyone because we have a different opinion. And actually, having different opinion is what is going to allow us to get closer to the truth, right? You know, and like, I mean, for me, 
this is what I experienced and I'm sure you went through this too because I think all vegetarians, vegans experience this. Like once you kind of start opening your eyes, you just want to tell everyone, you don't want to shake everyone be like, oh my God, like, you know, like, you know, for me when I went veg, I lost like 25 pounds mm-hmm. and, and people were coming to me naturally but I also wanted to wake people up and be like, I would see people walking in the mall or Costco and like, like look at it. Like I remember one time we were in the mall and this guy's pushing his cart and he's like breathing heavy and he's this big overweight guy and he's got his cart full of hamburgers and stuff and I wanted to go up to him and be like, hey, like, I can save your life. Like, that's what I really wanted to do. But I knew that I, that would, it wouldn't be well received mm-hmm. and he wouldn't be in a place. But that's what, that's the, when you, when you learn new information, you want to, you just want to help. Right. But you can only, the thing I learned is that you can only give that help to someone that's willing to receive it and you can't force it on people, you know? And that's what I tried to do as a vegetarian for a long time was like, I tried to force it on people. And I always tell the story about I say people would say why are you a vegetarian i would say because i don't want to die of cancer <laughs> and right away Jeez. just like that response obviously is a it triggered like force right and so then i would get forced back from people and it would be this 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 fight but now when people say why are you a vegetarian because that's what i love to do you know and i'm more open to even a meat eater's opinion of what is healthy because i i'm just not going to hold on to the positionality of being a vegetarian i don't even like giving myself the label of being mm-hmm. a vegetarian right so I think the answer is when people are ready, they'll they'll see, and when they're not ready, they'll they'll probably get sucked into the fear. And when people are in the state of fear, fight or flight, they will literally attack you, and they'll 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 even kill you, right? Like I mean, they killed Jesus, <laughs> you know. So, and then that's it. That's exactly what happens: is that they get to the state of fear, their their own opinions are challenged, they're uncomfortable with it, and they will literally they'll disown you. They'll never talk to you ever again. You know, family members will cut you off, these types of things. And that's what you have to be careful of um, moving forward is this, uh, you know, well, all of us that are trying to get as most connected to the truth as possible is that, that, that whole like herd mentality. It's, you know, it can be scary at times to, to see how people get so wrapped up in it. Yeah, it's definitely dangerous. And I think a lot of the times is that if you start to raise questions about the coronavirus narrative, people automatically assume that you're disrespecting all the doctors and nurses. You're disrespecting everyone who passed away from the coronavirus. You're disrespecting their friends and family who suffered repercussions from this. And it's like, that's not what is the focus of this. Like the focus of the anger that you have towards, like, it's almost like I always ask people, like, please redirect your anger and like to me the messenger and focus on the message here and the message here that I'm constantly sharing is like as awful as the coronavirus is and as scary as can be we are missing the fact that without a baseline good optimal health we don't have anything like it doesn't make sense to me that we are still not addressing our agricultural system and our and our water and like that is what what builds our health that is like the root of our health that's your foundation so if people aren't nourishing their bodies and like every single bite of food you put in your body is either feeding disease or it's feeding your health and it's like when you think about it like that like whatever you are eating that is what your body is going to pull apart to create its immune system cell right? it's going to that's what you use your to build your cells with so when people are having like all these chronic symptoms like your body is screaming out to you something is not right here like it's not normal to get headaches every day it's not normal to be exhausted to have insomnia to be so depressed to like constantly have food cravings for things like nonstop. It's like your body is, is missing nutrients. It's, it's, I think we are so, we are overfed, but we are malnourished. Like we are missing micronutrients. They're weight of our soil. Um, obviously like the food we get, most people eat like fast food. I know people who eat fast food every single day. And it's like, what do you think that is doing to your body? And knowing that your hormones play a role in like your immunity and it's all in your gut and like whatever's happening in your stomach if you are bloated if you are having digestive issues like they say your your gut is your second brain Mm -hmm. that is where all your like they're they're connected like your whole body as a system is connected so it's like whatever you're feeding you like if you are not nourishing your body and it's not like you can't just eat like a salad once a week and think that's going to give health it's a constant every single meal is making or breaking your health so a lot of people will look at me like, well, like, what's your secret? Like, what are you doing? Like, you're so healthy. You're so fit. You have so much energy. And it's just like, I've been, I've been trying to heal my body from my childhood upbringing, which was like Lunchables and processed white bread. Like, I've been trying to heal my body for like the last nine years, eating in the best way possible. And I'm so passionate about health because it's just like, what is more empowering than knowing how to heal your body and like 
learning to listen and like eat intuitively, uh, sorry, eat intuitively and to like move your body. It's just, it's, it's insane to me that we have lost the principles of like the foundations of our health. And like, I, um, there's an amazing doctor called Zach Bush. He's a triple board certified doctor and he speaks, he used to work for like the chemo industry and like the war against cancer and I would highly suggest checking him out I do believe he has a podcast he's been interviewed by like almost every person who has a podcast but he talks about like the microbiome and how how essential it is the food we are eating and like what is on our food like how that make or breaks our health and how that is like the basis like I just you can't you can't address a pandemic and a virus with like a mask and hand sanitizer when it's like that's not that's not going to stop or like improve anybody's health that could stop this like say everyone was sneezing nonstop. i understand it would block the sneezes from traveling sure but at the end of the day did your mask improve your health at all also do normal people even wear their mask correctly i constantly the second you are touching a mask you have contaminated it you are touching things in the grocery store you move it down to smoke your cigarette you slap that baby back on like i don't understand what people think like that help that is doing to improve their health it's not doing anything there are so many studies there was two boys in china who died during recess or or gym class because they were told to run and they had to wear masks on there and these two kids died of hypoxia there was people crashing their cars because they had n95 respirators on and they lacked oxygen like the common sense that we <laughs> that we seem to lack so much in society i've seen people drop their their face mask on the bathroom floor of the mall and slap it back on their face and i'm just like man if people just understand like that breathing in your recycled like bacteria is causing more harm than good but like if we're, if we're just going to focus on the mandates of being like mask and physical distancing and hand sanitizer and the government's not addressing our food and fitness level and mental health. Because I know like, what is it? It's December now, January around the 28th or 29th is when Bell Media will do the Bell Let's Talk Day and they mm-hmm. suddenly care about mental health. And I just think that is the biggest slap in the face because like they don't address it the whole the whole year, but they'll wait till January for everyone to like right to like show how much they care yeah and i think also too what you know we want to leave people with from this podcast is that yeah things need to change at a macro level for sure but you need everyone needs to take full responsibility for their own health just like you have just Mm -hmm. like uh, even i have i'm still i still have a long way to go with regards to physical health and food but we can't wait for the government to change we can't wait for a big farmer to change um you just need to take control of your own health and you need to look at everything um, from like a 30,000 foot view. You know, you don't ever want to get pigeonholed into believing that this one thing is the be all end all. You always want to be open to discovering the truth. Right. And um, I I just wouldn't want to wait for uh, Monsanto or whatever to change their policies or whatever. Like I want to try and, and uh, you know, cultivate my own health as much as possible and take full responsibility for my own health. And, you know, when you start, really opening your eyes it can become overwhelming right you can be like holy shit we're fucked right and so it's uh it's about reconnecting to the the fact that um it's never about what's going on out there and it's always about what's going on within and and inside of our own selves so um, if you can heal um with with yourself you're actually going to end up bringing up people around you and creating more awareness uh about about the truth and uh, you know i don't want people to think like like that's it's all uh, it's all terrible you know um do you see like do you see any good happening from this i do like as much as we can focus on like the skyrocketing rates of suicide and poverty and people who are really struggling like there is good from it for sure i was fortunate enough to like really connect with a lot of people and i think a lot of more people like open their eyes up to their own personal health i also think it's interesting because I always hear this excuse all the time whenever somebody goes, oh, I wish I could do veganism or I wish I could get into fitness, but I don't have the time. And then we look back, you had eight months of like forced time. Like people were forced into their homes and like you had all this time to work on. If you wanted to do a music career, could have learned an instrument, you could have dedicated to fitness. Like you had all this time to invest in yourself and so many people just didn't. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you wait around for somebody to come up to you and be like, I'm going to help heal you or like, I can fix you. Like why wait around for that? I don't understand why people don't have this like desire to want to like learn how to be healthier because 
if you could only realize that you could be happier, you could sleep better, you could have more energy, like you don't need coffee every day to feel awake because if you could nourish your body and it could heal itself, you wouldn't be falling sick every Christmas, like when the flu season comes around. It's just, there's such an empowerment to dedicating some time of yourself. It's almost like that is... To me, self-care isn't like bubble baths and face masks and yeah. stuff like that. It's it's taking time to, you know what? Today I'm going to go and make food at home because I'm going to use like whole ingredients. I'm not going to go buy something processed because I want to put these phytonutrients, antioxidants into my body. Like you want to nourish your body, nourish your mind. And I feel like when you do that, you become healthier and then you're able to help your friends or family members come. It's like a ripple effect of people that you are empowering you are lifting up because you can't wait for the government you can't wait for the pharmaceutical industry like how long did it take for them to be like sorry cigarettes actually cause cancer yeah. like you know like i think they said that in terms of studies on like long-term effects on like what our lifestyles like we are like decades behind like we won't know the repercussions of what we're doing in the next month it'll become like in the next few generations it'll be like look back like why did they slap masks on their face why didn't they address like this food insecurity issue and like I just think that people need to empower themselves and just like take back that power so that they can heal themselves and then like help uplift others. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's I think that's where we leave it is that you're not helpless. No, you can take charge of your own health. Right. And and yeah, you when you do that, you might get people being negative in your DMs if you choose to spread the word. But um, it's about like taking full responsibility for your own health and um, just starting to open your eyes and just not buying into every single thing that you see on the news. I would also say like when these people are giving the mandates or you're talking to your doctor and they give you health advice, like do these people look like they're at their optimal health? Mm. Because all my pediatricians were like at least 400 pounds overweight. Like mm. the, the, I've seen so many like <laughs> deputies and stuff speak and they look like they're corpses. Like they're so pale and they just look so sick and they're just, you can just tell people are so malnourished and it's like, if these people don't even take care of themselves, like how do you know anything about health yeah. to be like dictating it to other people? It's like going to the personal trainer that's overweight. Yeah. Like yeah. I would want to look up to somebody who is like, like living their truth. And like, I'd be like, you know what? You look really healthy. I kind of believe in what you're saying when you're telling me that he eats up my intake in vitamin C and vitamin yeah. zinc and like all of these nutrients. But we classify that as like Eastern medicine and it's all like, you know, it's not, it's not held in the same light or the same type of like importance as Western medicine. And I think that's the main problem of why people are so, so iffy on trying to like see something from a different perspective. It's because this is all they've ever known. Yes. And they don't want to be told that they're wrong. They don't want to feel like they were fooled by anybody or that their doctor didn't care about them. But like at the end of the day, all of us grew up thinking a certain way. We were told certain things were true and certain things were false. And the interesting thing about that is like science has never settled. We are constantly finding that things that we were doing before could be improved. Like there's never a reason why we can't improve our health and improve our understanding on things. So I don't think anybody should accept anything we've been told about anything because there's always room for improvement. There's always people pushing the boundaries, questioning things and opening our, up our minds to like more knowledge. And I just think it's really important that people yeah. realize that it's okay to question things and it's okay to dig deeper and to come up with your own, your own opinion to something. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We could probably talk for hours about this, but let's wrap it up with that. I think you uh, delivered a ton of value and I hope, I hope that this uh, kind of opened the door for some people, you know, to start uh, really looking within and looking um, to discover the truth and maybe not being so closed off to other people's opinions because you never know you might be closing yourself off to uh, a next level of health or helping a, a friend or a family member so Jalen it's awesome great having you on the podcast we might have to do like a part two to this or something along those sure. lines thank you so much for having me oh no it was great you did a great job um thanks for taking the time to listen to the podcast don't forget if you haven't already just click that subscribe button every single Wednesday we're releasing a new podcast and uh yeah see you next week <laughs>